I wanted to make this video for the many of you that have asked me, what is the alternative to Thrive Automator now that Thrive Themes or their parent company, whoever's pulling the strings, has announced that Thrive Automator would be sunset, deprecated, etc., basically going away in the future. Just so you know, right now, Thrive Automator still completely functions and it's going to work until it doesn't, meaning one day they may make a change where the way in which Thrive Automator interacts with Thrive Apprentice, which is really the, the big integration here. That's the one we're really worried about. Um, they may change the way that users get access to products, etc. And once they make a change from how Thrive Automator was granting access, the platform may suddenly stop working. So we want to make sure that we're set up in a place where we're not suddenly caught one day without a system that's working when data is trying to be sent over or when we're trying to give people access to our courses. So let's look at some of the different options that you have available to you uh, for making your current setup work. So this is where they're trying to get you to go. They're trying to get you to go to Uncanny Automator. It's at automatorplugin.com. I'll put a link in the description. They're trying to get you to sign up for uh, their, I don't know if it's a sister company, basically owned by the same people. They're trying to get you to sign up for this. And essentially it's going to do exactly what Thrive Automator did for free. And they're gonna charge you for it on an annual basis. You're gonna get it for 149 for the first year, and then it will renew at 199. If you have multiple sites, unfortunately, you're going to be renewing at 349. And now this is radically too expensive. If you've got one site, this is the only plan that you need, the basic plan. So what is Uncanny Automator? Well, again, it's exactly what Thrive Automator was. You build triggers and actions, recipes, workflows, automations that fire when things happen. Uh, it, something triggers, something happens. Kind of like Zapier and other options, but internal to your WordPress site. Unfortunately, this tool is, and just so you know, I've had a lifetime license to this tool since 2020. I used it for several years. I feel like I, I'm an expert enough to speak about the tool. Um, I have always found it to be a little bit clunky. I'm not a big fan of the way you set up automations um, and just not a major fan of the tool, which is why I stopped using it in favor of uh, basically a free tool, even though I had a lifetime license, um, because Thrive Automator was just so much better at the Thrive ecosystem. It's really too bad to see it go. So this is your first option. I'll give you the gist of how this works in a second. Now, Uncanny Automator works really well with just about every tool. All these solutions are gonna work roughly the same. If you're using Surecart, if you're using other third-party tools to grant access to your courses, this will work pretty much the same as, as Thrive Automator did. The limitations are if you were doing things with like forms and Thrive Architect and things like that, those won't work quite as well. And Thrive Automator had something pretty special there. Um, but these will still work with all of your third-party email tools to tag and all that stuff. Now, another option is going to be um, AutoKit. AutoKit, basically, I, I don't know, formerly Sure Triggers. Um, this is a pretty good tool, especially if you're using Surecart, which I know many of you watching this video do use Surecart, which was why you probably were using Thrive Automator to grant access to your Thrive Apprentice courses. Uh, this is a very good solution. They have a lifetime price. So for four, basically $399, $400, you can get 5,000 tasks per month. Think of that like roughly 5,000 people you need to give access to a course per month. That This is plenty uh, for the vast majority of us. Um, so if you get 5,000 tasks per month, lifetime charge of $399, works super, super well. I've, I've used Surecart for years now. Now here's the downside. They have no direct integration with Thrive Apprentice. I feel like that was done with purpose. By getting rid of Thrive Automator, they've essentially made it so that the Thrive ecosystem is once again completely closed and you've got to go through one of their paid solutions. Now inside of Thrive Apprentice, under access requirements for a specific product, I want to talk about these different ways in which you can give access. The first one is WordPress role. Now, if you've watched any of my videos in the past, I've always said, oh, don't use WordPress role. It's it convolutes the whole process, etc." Well, now this is really the key to making this whole thing work externally without having to use their paid tools and without having to essentially use one of these other options. You're going to need to use a tool like AutoKit to change people's user roles based on what they purchase and to create user roles and things like that. So this suddenly becomes the primary way for external tools to grant access to Thrive Apprentice. Now, if you're using Thrive Cart, this integration still works like it always has. It's a little finicky. It always has been with cancellations, things like that. Um, but if you're using Thrive Cart, this is still the way to go. I have plenty of videos on my channel. They're a few years old, but they are still 100% accurate for creating a Thrive Cart uh, based funnel 
giving access to Thrive Apprentice. If you're using WooCommerce, I have videos on that. That's all the same. Um, custom payment link, don't bother. And definitely don't use Stripe Connect. Don't bother with this. I have another video on that if you're interested in why. So really, it comes down to, if you're using Thrivecart and WooCommerce, cool, you're done. You don't need to worry about this. If you're using something like Surecart or you're using High Level or Samcart or any of these third-party tools that were previously sending a webhook over to Thrive Automator and Thrive Automator was giving access, now you've got a decision to make. You can change the user's user role in WordPress. And then just remember, if it's a subscription, you have to revoke that user role upon cancellation. Or you can use Uncanny Automator. You'll create a recipe. You can select Surecart as a default and say, if they purchase a product in Surecart, grant access. Or if it's an external tool, webhook comes in, catch that webhook. What do you do with it? Create a user, give that user access. I'll show you some of the specific setups here in a second, but I wanted to kind of iron out the big picture for those of you that may not need the individual tutorials. Uh, at this point, you're free to go explore the options of using a tool like AutoKit or any third-party tool that can change user roles, having received data from your payment tool or your funnel tool. So if you've chosen to use Uncanny Automator, you're going to create a recipe. And once you create your recipe, you're going to have to choose, will this be for logged in users or for everyone? Um, this is one of the parts I really just don't like about Uncanny Automator. I wish that there wasn't a distinction. Um, this is something that's always bothered me. Now, depending on your tool, this will determine which choice that you make here. If you're using an external tool, like let's just say you're using high level, you've built your funnels there, you're shooting a webhook over to your WordPress site, you need Uncanny Automator to catch that webhook and do something with it, you would choose everyone. Why? Because they're not logged in. If you're using something like Surecart, you have a little more wiggle room here because Surecart by default automatically creates a WordPress account uh, for that user, automatically logs them in. You could get away with logged in users. I'm gonna go ahead and set this up using everyone to show you some of the options here. So we'll choose everyone, we'll hit confirm. Now our trigger is going to be, where are we getting our data from? So if you were using Surecart, you would select Surecart. If you were using a webhook, you'd click webhook, receive data from a webhook, and then from here, you'd start to map your data, your keys, your values. I have plenty of videos on my channel. This was basically how Thrive Automator worked anyway, so you should already be familiar with this. You'd basically set up your webhook and then you would add an action. Here's where you would choose Thrive Apprentice. From here, you'd say grant access to a product. You'd need to set your user data um, because you have to basically map it to a user. So if you got data from a webhook, you'd say, I want to run this on a new user. And then you'd enter in, you'd map the fields. For example, you'd click the star and say the email is going to be the data received from the webhook. Choose the email. Same thing as Thrive Automator. For the role, you can leave that alone. For what to do if the user already exists, just say select the existing user based on their email. Basically what Thrive Automator did. Save that and you're good to go. Now, if this was not a webhook, let's say this was, delete this here, there's a trigger. Let's say that this was Surecart. Well, you're a little more limited here. Uh, I wish this was different, but this would be a guest purchases a product, which is confusing because members can purchase products or users, but we'll call them a guest. If they purchase a specific product, we could say, uh, let's choose our Thrive Suite bundle here, hit save. So they've purchased this particular product. Same deal, I'm gonna map the user data just like I would if I were receiving a webhook. I'm gonna hit cancel here, just to show you how that works. And then I'll delete this step because this is one of the clunky things about it. Um, I'll just delete this as well. And then I'll just restart here. So add action, Thrive Apprentice, grant access to a product, map your data. This is where it gets weird because Surecart's already creating the user. And the nice thing about the Thrive Automator integration with Surecart is it knew that. This doesn't know that. Um, so you would say um, existing user or new user. You could technically say new user. And then you could say if it already exists, which it will, use this email grant access to a product, and then you would be good to go. And that's essentially how uh, Uncanny Automator works. It's very clunky with this part of the setup. And that's basically how Uncanny Automator works with this setup. Depending on the number of products you have, that'll determine how many recipes that you have. Um, but I feel like $200 a year for this simple, <laughs> this simple tool uh, is a little bit annoying to me. I tend to prefer the other option of AutoKit. Is so if you want an alternative to Uncanny Automator, and personally, even though I have Uncanny Automator, I wouldn't use it in this setup. So what would I use? Well, I think that AutoKit slash used to be sure triggers is actually a pretty good option given there's that lifetime deal because it can be used for this use case and it can be used for a lot of different things, including AI agents and all kinds of stuff that aren't just tied to WordPress. 
there's a lot more bang for your buck here, particularly at a lifetime deal. So let's start with the automation. Let's go ahead and add a trigger here. Uh, again, just like with Uncanny Automator and any tool like this, like Zapier or anything, there's going to be a trigger. And in our case, it's going to be wherever we are selling from. I'll continue with Surecart as the example. And if we come into here, we have a lot more options. See, this is what Uncanny Automator was missing. We have so many different options here for refunds, cancels, trialing, everything you can imagine, affiliate stuff. Uh, th this is what you really are going to look for if you're heavy into Surecart. So I would recommend choosing Purchase Created and then connect to your Surecart store. Under Configure, you can choose the product that they purchased. So I'll choose a product here. We'll say the ThriveSuite bundle again. Continue on. You can do a test to fetch the data. You can save your action. So with our Purchase Created, we can add a trigger now. And this is where we are going to connect to WordPress and change that user role inside of Thrive Apprentice that I showed you earlier. Select WordPress, select the event. We have a lot of different events. You can create or update user. The user is going to exist, so updating them does make sense. In this case, if you were using a third-party tool like a SAM card or a high level, you would definitely do uh, create or update user. So I'm just gonna select that option here. Select your WordPress install that you have AutoKit connected to. And here's where we're gonna configure the user. So their name, you can set it. I like to do at, and you can just fill it in from this Surecart order. You really only need to populate their name and their email. So from here, you can have their uh, email address actually be their um, their username. So the same thing here with their email, just do at do email here. You can fill out the others if you want to. Now, by default, they'll probably be a subscriber or a Surecart customer or whatever other different user roles you have in here. We want to check this box to add an additional role, meaning that, like it says here, add an additional role without taking away their current role. So we need to have additional roles on our website that are going to line up with the products that we're creating. So we need to add ourselves a plugin here that lets us manage user roles if we don't have one. You can search for user role under the plugin uh, repo here. And this one right here uh, is good. Members, membership, and user role editor, that's fine. Or user role editor, also very, very good. I've used this one for a decade. This one's also pretty good too. Um, this one tends to be like a, an upsell into MemberPress because I think that's who makes this one. I think I actually have that installed down here. We can take a look. A any of them will get the job done. Um, we're just looking to add a user role. Yeah, you can see here, members by MemberPress, whatever. It's just helping us make user roles. So let's go ahead and add a role. And we're not gonna give this role any permissions whatsoever. It's going to be an extra role. But we'll call this our product A, uh, user role. And for what they can do under these, we're not gonna give them any permissions at all. We're just gonna say add role. Basically, it's like the subscriber role. It's not gonna do anything. So now that our user role is created, we can come into Thrive Apprentice. So I'll pop back over to Apprentice and then I'll go into products. I'll find my product here. I'll go to access requirements, user roles. And in here, I'm gonna say anyone that has, I, I would probably name your user roles what your products are. So this one I think was my Thrive cart, but uh, I don't even know what I selected, Thrive Cart bonus bundle. I chose a random product in my Thrive Apprentice. I would check that user role that matches and hit save. Now anyone that has that user role has access to this product and will see it in Thrive Apprentice. All the things you've set up on your custom dashboard, if you followed my videos, all the things that you've done over the years, so that if someone has access to the product, do X, Y, Z, all of that will function the same with this user role. So now under our user roles here, we have to come back to our automation now. Come back over here, hit refresh. We're going to change the user role to our product A or whatever user role we made for this product that's associated with this shirt cart purchase or purchase from whatever third-party external tool we're using. And we're going to hit continue. You can hit test action. You're gonna to need to do that uh, and go ahead and hit save. Now there's our basic automation that matches up with what you would have had inside of Thrive Automator. And if you had other actions like add them to my email list inside of High Level or add them to my uh, kit.com or active campaign, you can do all of that as well in subsequent steps. When you're done with that, go ahead and hit publish. Now the inverse of this, you'd have to do this in Uncanny Automator as well if this was a subscription. So maybe you have like an all access membership and it grants access to a bunch of courses, or you've sold a membership or an annual subscription to something. Well, the nice thing about Sure Triggers or AutoKit now is that you can select an event and say uh, cancels. So subscription is canceled. And the nice thing about Surecart is that it sends the cancel signal at the end of the billing period. So for example, if their subscription expires on June 1st, 
So for example, if their subscription expires on June 15th and they canceled on June 1st, the cancellation signal will not be triggered until the 15th, so they'll retain access until that point. Really nice feature that has forever been baked into this system, which I really appreciate. So you would change this to subscription canceled and then here, and the event here would not be update user rule. You would choose, I think it's called remove user rule. Let's just search for remove. There it is, remove rule from user. Perfect. And then you choose your site and then the role you would remove from the user would be the role that you created and you would find the user by their email, which would be the same email that you would have triggered it all with. And that would be how you would set up a cancellation, refund, revoke, expiration uh, from whatever tool you use to manage all that, in this case, Surecart, push that user role update. And once the user role is removed uh, from the user, well, then under here, they would no longer have access because to access this product, you need to have this user role. Okay, so to put a cap on it, those are two of the options. I don't say that I would recommend because I definitely don't recommend the Uncanny Automator option at $200 a year. Uh, the Auto Kit pricing at lifetime, you really can't beat that and you can do so much more with the tool. So between the pro and the business plan, because you get all these extra little goodies like um, path branching and if you want to do their API module, you can. You do get some pretty good features for that with like sending webhooks from this. Um, but this would be your two options here. This one pays for itself in two years. This one pays for itself in three. So you do the math on how long you're planning or needing um, to be using these tools. But those are really your options for keeping things kind of the same for you in Thrive Apprentice after losing Thrive Automator. Okay, future Doug here. I just finished editing uh, most of this video and I realized one important key point that I wanted to bring up and that is uh, that Thrive Automator also enabled more functionality inside of Thrive Apprentice than just giving access to products. And everything we've talked about here today is just access based. Thrive Automator also handled a lot of drip functionality and functionality that was not baked into the default settings of Thrive Apprentice. And I think we've lost most of that functionality. So if you were relying upon Thrive Automator's drip functionality as part of your drip campaign, there is a, or used to be a setting inside of Thrive Apprentice where under the drip section, you could select uh, Thrive Automator, I forget the exact terminology, but it was like dictated by Thrive Automator. And that allowed us to do some really fun things with being able to restrict access to specific lessons. In fact, if you go watch my lessons on the channel here about uh, bonus lessons for Thrive Apprentice, um, unlocking like specific lessons, uh, giving lessons as lead magnets, part of a course, all of those things are now pretty much deprecated as soon as Thrive Automator is deprecated. Uh, and those were some of the coolest features. So be aware that there is no replacement for that at the time of making this video. And I wanted to make you aware of that uh, essentially so that you could plan for reworking your courses or reworking your setup. You may want to take some of those lessons move them into a separate course or take them out of a course environment, make them standalone pages, add them to a Thrive Apprentice product or seek other alternatives entirely. All right, so I just wanted to add that uh, after editing. Let's go back to past Doug where I can wrap up the video. I've talked a lot about alternatives. If you're interested in alternatives to Thrive Apprentice, I have several videos on my channel already with tools that I recommend. I'll put some links in the description to playlists uh, where you can check out those tools. And I'm making plenty other videos because I know a lot of you are looking for at least future-proofing your business to make sure that you are set up on a system that isn't suddenly going to deprecate or sunset features uh, that you once relied on for your business. So if you need additional help or if you have questions about this, feel free to leave a comment down below. And I'll also include some links in the description where you can get additional help from me if you need it.